Welcome back to The Audiophile, I'm Rick Schultz. I wanted to share some great information with you that I've learned over the years um, from people that have done uh, different types of cleaning techniques and then shared that with me. Um, one of the things that is common within high-end audio is that as you have your connector, the connector starts to corrode over time. Most of the connectors, as you can see this one here, um, are gold-plated and they're usually gold-plated over some sort of brass material or an alloy of some type. What happens is um, that's an electroplating process and the um, electric energy is, is actually drawn through there to be able to make a bond between the, the brass, for example, and the gold that's la that lays on top of it. Over a period of time, as your, uh, uh, your uh, interconnect goes into the RCA and electricity actually travels through that path, it starts to break down some of that electrical contact. So the gold actually starts to break off and dissipate. And as it does, it starts to, it stops ceasing to be electrically conductive, and it actually blocks electrical conductivity. So this starts to inhibit the sound quality that you paid um, so much for your gear to try to get. Um, so when it comes to having clean connectors, this can be a really important step. If your uh, gear is a number of years old and you've never cleaned the connectors on it, and you go in and you do a good job and you do it right, um, you'll find that it may sound like you bought a brand new system. It can be really dramatic and that's because the amount of damage that can be caused by corrosion within conductors is a pretty big deal. It can really get to the point where it's actually stopping a lot of the signal from flowing the way that it should. So you spend a lot of money on your cables, and you spend a lot of money on your gear, now it takes a little bit of maintenance in order to be able to keep that going. Now, over a period of time, the actual uh, material on here, the, the, um, the, the gold, will probably end up coming off. And when you do your cleaning, if your product is a few years old, you may notice that you continue to clean, and as you do, um, there's a black residue that comes off, and it keeps doing that and doing that. Um, it may be that all of the gold material is coming off. You're still better to take that out of the way and just connect into the brass that's left behind than try to preserve that gold, because once that gold has started to oxidize, there's no way of saving it. It's no longer electrical conductive and it's not helping you at all anymore. So that once precious gold plating is now destroyed and gone. And now instead of being a, a, a pleasure to have, um, it simply is a problem. So we want to get rid of it. Um, now we're not going to use abrasives or things like that to try to get rid of it. That, that would be silly. What we want to do is just try to get in there and, and remove the stuff that's actually oxidized. So there's all sorts of cleaners that are made for that. Um, Craig makes this stuff called Deoxit, and um, this is a D5, and uh, it works really great on uh, cleaning uh, connectors and things like that. Um, one of my personal favorites is MG Chemicals, um, the Super Contact Cleaner um, with poly polyphenol ether. And uh, this stuff here is actually uh, able to increase conductivity a little bit as well. Um, and we've used it at some points in time for that. Um, but really it's just a great contact cleaner. Now you have to be careful where you use it. It seems to be maybe just slightly conductive. Um, of course there's nothing on here that claims that it is. Um, and with all these chemicals you have to be careful with what you use it on. Um, any type of carrying agent, things like alcohol, can break down some types of plastic. Now when we make things like RCAs, they're for the most part made to be very durable. And the material that should be being used in things like an RCA here should be Teflon. Now it isn't always. Um, Teflon is pretty much impervious to things um, like alcohol, um, but you want to try to make sure it's compatible. How much research can you do? Probably not a lot. Um, it's going to be really difficult for you to find out what kind of plastic. Um, so you have to depend a little bit on the actual manufacturers that are making these products that they're building something that's compatible with most plastics most of the time. I've never seen an RCA connector break down from something like this. Um, in fact, I'm not sure if I remember a connector of any type ever breaking down from something like the Deoxit or the uh, Super Contact Cleaner. Um, now, there's also good old-fashioned alcohol, and it works great too. Um, this is also an MG chemical product. Um, it's very high purity alcohol. Um, what's the difference between high purity and low purity? Water. Um, so uh, there's just less water inside this, and there's less contaminants with inside the alcohol itself. Um, basically, it just makes it dry faster um, and, and do a better job of, of cleaning overall. 
Alcohol isn't something I typically clean with. I like to use a, an actual cleaner, so we go to the MG Chemical. Now, what else can we do? Well, one of the things that I would recommend that you have is a drill. Um, it doesn't matter the quality of drill, um, as long as it's 18 volts. No, I'm just kidding you. That wouldn't matter either. But, uh, it's, I, sense of humor, I try to have one. Um, this little guy right here, a Q-tip, and uh, you notice that the material has been removed off the end of the Q-tip, because I want to be able to have it fit into the back. So basically what we're going to do is we're going to put the Q-tip. Now it's a really good idea to have one that has a wooden stem and you'll notice that I've got that here. Um, the other ones tend to twist and break. They don't have the strength in order to, to do what I'm going to show you to do. Um, and as you pull this material off the end, you'll actually be able to fit the Q-tip inside, but you don't want to pull too much material, okay? Um, there's really just a bit that's left on the end. I don't know if you can get that clean enough there to, uh, with, through the video camera to be able to understand how much we leave behind, but um, how do you know? Well, first of all, what you want to do is typically you start off with alcohol. Now, alcohol is the base for most all cleaners, um, so I'm going to spray alcohol on this first. And uh, I'm going to put it up to the connector, and then I'm going to try to make sure that I'm coming in at a very straight angle. You don't want your um, wooden stem to break. And then let it spin and push just slightly. And as we do, you can notice that it's going in farther. Okay, And basically we hit a point where it just doesn't go in any farther. Now what I just did there is broke that off on the inside, and I'm glad I did because I want you to show you that kind of stuff can happen. And if it does, you simply pull it out. Now what if it doesn't just come out like that? Well, you might want to look into getting some sort of like a, uh, a little hook, like a, a very small little knitting needle style that will pull the cotton out if you get cotton stuck out in there. Um, for the most part, uh, I've never seen anything that was, got stuck in one of those RCA holes. It wasn't relatively easy to get out, you just have to be a little bit inventive. So when that goes in there and it cleans it, you'll notice that it starts to bring off. Now that's actually a brand new connector, so it's not doing it. But typically what you'd see is a fair amount of black residue that comes off the end. So here's another one that was done earlier, and you can see that black residue on the end of it. And what happens is, as you go through, you want to continue to change it out. And then the next time you apply your deoxid and then go back in again. And then you'd, uh, or, or if you use super contact cleaner, or whatever cleaner you choose to use. I don't know that that's the important part. Now, this video isn't necessarily about just that. One of the things that I wanted to show you that I think is more important than all this, uh, it, I say that loosely because this is really important, um, but if you were to skip this and just do this, it would still have really great results. Doing both is even a better idea. And my original intent of the video today was to show you this product called Stabilant 22. Stabilant 22 is a contact enhancer. Now, contact enhancers have been around audio for quite some period of time, but they change um, in the different types of formulas that are out there. And a lot of them have been materials that are uh, silver suspended in something. Um, what happened with these uh, products is they started to cause shorts and um, problems with inside electronics. Um, they were voiding warranties and uh, people had electronics even blow up on them. Um, so although they did improve the sound of electronics, they became so, problem, uh, pro so problematic that for the most part, I don't know of anybody today that continues to use that kind of stuff. Um, there's a gentleman though that um, invented this particular product. Now this is a conductive cross-linking polymer. Um, it's Stabilant 22, and it only conducts when electricity is already electrically conductive. So when electricity is going through a path, this will help it go through that path, but it won't create a path. So uh, in one of their demos that they do, they actually take a circuit board um, and they drop it in a solution of Stabilant 22. It's a circuit board for a computer, and they show that it doesn't cause the computer to short. Um, so basically what this stuff does is it causes your electrical connection to have a less amount of arcing. So as the electrons are going through, and in an RCA basically all you have, and I'm going to show you this beautiful little RCA that somebody has made up here. I'm not sure whose it is, but something that we took on trade I'm sure. 
Um, and that little pin slides into this hole. So it's just a pin in a sleeve. Um, if you think about it on a mechanical level, um, it's a rod and a tube. And the rod has to be smaller than the tube in order to be able to slide into the tube. So in order to be able to make contact, there's just a very small amount of electrical area or mechanical contact causing the electrons to be able to jump through. This helps them to be able to go through that spot because uh, as they're going through, they arc. If you've ever taken a, a vacuum cleaner cord and just yanked it from the wall and seen the spark that can sometimes come between the actual cord coming out of the wall and the wall itself, electrons are jumping across that gap. Well, that's the same idea that we have in an RCA. On a different level, of course, we don't have that kind of energy traveling through, but electrons are arcing through just like that in order to get here, and that creates a lot of distortion. So stable at 22 is going to lower the amount of arcing that happens between the female pin and, sorry, the male pin and the female uh, RCA connector on the other side. Um, basically the rod and the tube. So <coughs> to, in order to be able to put this stable on, let me show you how to do that. Um, the last thing I would do is I would give a shot of alcohol into the connector before I apply stable at 22. So I just go in there and give a shot. If you've got an aerosol, um, it's a good idea if it's fairly full. If you don't have a little, a little air compressor or canned air, you're going to have to take some time and let that dry before you reconnect. Uh, why? Otherwise it will dilute the, the stable at 22. Now when you read your instructions in stable at 22, it's going to say to dilute it. Okay, so it comes as a concentrate form, and then you're supposed to put alcohol in it. Um, we don't use alcohol here, that's our own particular choice. Um, the manufacturer recommends that you do, but I find that you get better overall sound when you just use it straight. Now people have uh, made comment that when you put this stuff on, it tends to make you have a closed in sound, and it, it kind of takes away some of the high end, and maybe takes away a little bit of the bass. That's common in all things that happen when you remove distortion. So when you remove distortion, you're going to remove something that sounds like audio signal. When you do that, it'll give the audio signal a chance to start actually coming through. So you'll notice that within 12, 24 hours, things start to really open up. And within 48 hours, you're going to have a lot more air, a lot more openness, a lot more detail, capturing a lot more things that you just never heard before, simply because you've got a lot better contact. But you do that by lowering distortion. So audio, and the challenge to better audio, is to lower distortion to allow better audio signal and to allow more audio signal. So if we take the stable in 22 and we put it on the end of the pin, I'm just going to put it on here straight and uh, I'm not worrying about putting too much that I create a short in the back of the connector because again stable in 22 won't short. So I can put it on there, I can put it on fairly liberally and put it onto the back. Now if I want to do the ground connection as well. Just basically hit it with a little bit of stablement on the top and that's all there is to it. So that will basically give you a lower amount of arcing. Um, everybody that watches one of these videos tends to play a little bit themselves. Um, you'll have people coming back and saying, you know, it works a lot better to go all the way around the connector. Absolutely it would. Um, that's fairly good common sense. Um, and it's these sorts of things, I'm just trying to inspire your imagination, get you going to be able to give you ideas on how to improve your audio system for either little or no money. Little or no money? Well, a can of isopropyl alcohol is approximately $10. A can of cleaner like this, I think, is around $19, and you can buy Stable in 22 um, either through us or online on Amazon for somewhere around $30. So we figure that this particular tweak is uh, almost free. That's basically it. You may want to know where all can I use Stable in 22. Well, that becomes the question. Um, they recommend that you don't use it on the end of power cords, however I have. Do it at your own risk. Um, I use it on fuses, on the ends of fuses as I put them into the fuse holder. Um, I go so far as to disconnect the connections on the inside of um, a, a device and uh, cut the top off this one here so hopefully we can look inside of it. And uh, 
I probably should have looked beforehand. Um, sometimes you'll see little push connectors on the inside and you can take those push connectors and you can actually put stablement on top of those and then push them down in there again. Now all of this sort of stuff you're going to do at your own risk. Uh, for the most part there's not a lot of risk involved. Um, I've actually dumped a bottle accidentally inside one of my CD players right on top of the circuit board. Um, I was devastated. I was so sure that something was going to happen. This stuff was actually going to cause me a problem and it never did. Um, it was actually absolutely fine and I had no problems whatsoever. Um, so that's basically it. Um, if you have any questions um, well, we all have questions. I'm Rick Schultz. Welcome to the audio file.